So we just looked at um, a review of composition of two functions and how to find two functions and take the composition to give us back our original function. So we did that because that's gonna be helpful for us when we look at right now, a new rule for derivatives, the chain rule. And so let's go through what this says and let's kind of decipher the meaning of it. So it says the chain rule, it says if f and g are both differentiable, so they both have to be differentiable functions and capital F, is equal to the composition of two functions, f of g, um, f little circle g. It is the composite um, composite function defined by. So, just like we were doing, we could take this main function. In this case, they call it capital F of x, and this is equal to the composition of two functions, f of g of x. If that's the case, and we know f of x is differentiable, and we know g of x is differentiable, then we can say that capital F is differentiable, and we can write it as f prime. So f prime is given by the following product. Okay, so here is a rule. So the derivative of a composition of functions, f prime of x, capital F prime of x, this is equal to the derivative of the outer function f, and we write it as f prime of x, of the inner function g of x times the derivative of g of x, g prime of x. So let me kind of write out what I was just saying. So we're gonna take the derivative of the outer function and in this case we called it f of x and then of the inner function So mathematically, how I'm writing that is the derivative of the outer function is just f prime, right? Of the inner function, in my case, my inner function was g of x. So I'm just gonna go back in and wherever I see an x in the derivative of f of x, I need to plug in my original inner function g of x. So that's what this piece is saying. And then breaking down the next piece, it's just saying now we're gonna take this and we're gonna multiply it times the derivative of the inner function. And I ran out of room. Okay, so that's um, the chain rule, and we'll go through some examples. I don't think I'm going to prove this right now, um, but there's another way to write this. So we've seen that there's different ways, notation to write derivatives. And sometimes one way is easier than the other way. Um, so we're, we're going to go through using it both, using both notation. So let's just go through the other notation really quick. And what this says is in Leibniz notation, so the notation actually that we had above is Newton's notation. So Leibniz notation says if we can have some function y, which is equal to f of u. So our function is in terms of the variable u, and we have our function u is equal to g of x. So u is like our y value in this case and our case, and they called it the function g of x. And it's saying that that function is in terms of x. Okay, so if we have y is equal to f of u and u is equal to g of x, we have to um, have the stipulation that they're both differentiable functions. 
then we could rewrite this as if we took up the derivative of y with respect to x. Well, notice here y is in respect to u, we said. But if we want to take the derivative of y with respect to x, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the derivative of y first with respect to u. And then we're going to look at the derivative of our u function with respect to x and multiply those together. The only thing is that after this, you're going to replace um, g of x into this derivative. of y for you. And then that function will be then all in terms of x. Okay, so now that we have gone through the definition, let's go and look at an example. Okay, so let's say that we have, let's actually start with something a little simpler and one that we would be able to take the derivative without um, doing the chain rule. So we're gonna look at it two different ways. So let's say f of x is equal to, actually let me change this to h of x, or I can change it as capital F of x, but I don't wanna use f of x just cause I've been using it up here. So maybe h of x is equal to, I don't know, um, x minus three quantity squared. So if we wanted to find the derivative of this, of h of x, let's make it a little harder than a square. Let's actually go up here and make this a cube. And let's first do this by expanding h of x. So right now, without that chain rule, we could approach this and take the derivative by rewriting h of x out. Well, x minus three quantity cubed we can't just cube it, um, each piece inside the parentheses. We have to rewrite this. This is that parentheses times itself three times. So right now we could technically use the product rule. And if I use that product rule, I'd have to use it twice in here. So I noticed that, well, let's expand it first. So if I first distribute x minus three times x minus three, and combine like terms, we would get an x squared, a negative three x and a negative three x, so minus six x, and a negative three times negative three, so plus nine. All times that second parentheses, x minus three. Now expand this, I could, if I wanted to, I still, now I could use the product rule, but it would only be, I'd only have to apply it once. But to me, it would be faster if I distribute. So let's just distribute the x squared each term. So I have x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative three is negative three x squared. Let's go through now, distribute negative six x to each term in the second parentheses. So negative six x times x is minus six x squared. Negative six x times negative three, that's a plus 18 x. Distributing my nine now, I have nine times x is plus nine x. Nine times negative three is negative 27. I'm almost ready to take the derivative, but I wanna first clean it up a little bit by combining like terms. I notice there's no other term that has an x cubed. So let's bring down that x cubed. I am looking for all terms with an x squared. I have negative three x squared minus six x squared. That's gonna give me a minus Oops, minus, I almost multiplied them, minus nine x squared. 
we have an 8x plus a 9x. So that gives me a plus 27x. And then the only constant I have is minus 27. So this is h of x. So now this h of x is ready that we can take this derivative. So h prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first term, bring our power down, subtract one from our power. So we get the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared minus the derivative of 9x squared. So we're gonna bring our power down and multiply it by the coefficient of nine in front. So two times nine is 18 x subtract one from our power, so we get one. Plus the derivative of 27x is just 27, and the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, so here is our derivative function of h of x by going through and expanding it. Now let's look at the chain rule. And knowing the chain rule, how much faster and easier this is going to be. So it will be, let's solve by using the chain rule. I'm just going to write my function up here again so that I can move the screen over. So I have h of x is equal to x minus 3 quantity cubed. Okay, so first thing we want to do, if we're going to use the chain rule, we want to figure out what is going to be our inner function. And we talked about the inner function being if we had parentheses raised to some power, what was inside the parentheses. So let's choose g of x to be x minus three. And we had to have our outer function. So our outer function, well, we put an x where we saw our inner function. So we have an x here. And then that whole thing is cubed. So I can say that my composition of h of x, this was equal to f of g of x. Well, the chain rule, first of all, we talked about h prime of x, let me just write it out, that's equal to the derivative of f prime of the inner g of x. And then we're taking this whole thing, I'm just gonna put brackets around it, but we technically don't need it, and multiplying it by the derivative of the inner function, g prime of x. So you can do this in pieces. You're gonna get good enough that you're gonna not have to do this in pieces. But if I wanted to do this and I wanted to look at f prime of x, well, the derivative of x cubed, that's pretty easy, right? Hopefully, um, is three x squared. Bring down our power, subtract one from our exponent. The derivative of g of x, that's also should be very easy. And if I look at the derivative of g of x, this is equal to the derivative of x minus three. So derivative of x is one, and the derivative of the constant is zero. If I now want to look at, well, what is f prime of g of x? So f prime of g of x, this is equal to f prime, well, g of x function was this x minus three. So that's telling me to go back in and wherever I see an x in my derivative function, I'm replacing that with x minus three. So I see this is equal to my three out front 
I see an X, I'll put parentheses, square it, and put an X minus three inside that parentheses. So right now, my H prime of X I have is equal to this F prime of G of X, which we just found was three times X minus three quantity squared. And we're gonna multiply that by G prime of X, which we already did the work. G prime of X is just one. So H prime of X is equal to three all times X minus three quantity squared. Okay, so let's go back and look at what we had had before. Notice that they don't totally look alike, but we're gonna be using, taking the derivatives a lot and finding when that derivative is zero. So we can find max and min values. Also to find where our function is increasing and decreasing, but you gotta wait for that. That's next chapter. Um, and so notice that this form right here, the second form when we use that chain rule is easier to find the values where that's set equal to zero versus this where we're gonna have to manipulate it. So let's just show it's equal. These are equivalent. Well, I notice if I factor H prime of X over here, notice that they all have a coefficient of three in common. So it's easier if we can pull that out first. So let's factor out a three from all those three terms. And so if I pull a three out of three X squared, I'm left with X squared minus if I pull a three out of 18 X, I'm left with six X plus, and if I pull a three out of 27, I'm left with nine. So factoring the trinomial X squared minus six X plus nine, I know this is the two numbers that multiply to give me my constant nine and add to negative six is negative three and negative three. So this factors as X minus three times X minus three, which is equivalent to rewriting it with a quantity squared. So here was a case where we could have used another or different methods to find that derivative, but using and knowing that chain rule was a lot faster and a lot easier. But that might be helpful for us to look at that as the same example and actually go through this Leibniz notation to find the derivative. And so in this case, we want to choose u to be the inner function. And so we're going to choose u and u is a function of x. So we could write it as u of x, but they just write it as u is equal to the function x minus three. Our y is in terms of u. So y is in terms of u. So y sub u. So where would we put a u that we would replace it with x minus three? And so in here, I would write y sub u is equal to um, u cubed. So if I look at the derivative and we wanna look at what is dy du. So if I look at the derivative of my function y with respect to u, notice I have derivative of u cubed using the general power rule gives me back three u squared. So right now let's just put in three u squared here times the derivative of u with respect to x. So we said that u is equal to x minus three. And so if we take the derivative of u with respect to x to u dx, well, the derivative of x is one and the derivative of negative three is zero. So this would be times one. This is three u squared. Sorry, and this I should have written as dy du. I'm sorry, and not dy du, I should have written it as dy dx. So dy dx. 
Notice this is the derivative with respect to x. And in our function, we still have a u in here. And so we have to go back. This is where I was saying when I was going through the going through the notation, we have to go back and we need to replace what u is in terms of x. Well, u is in terms of x is x minus three. So this is equal to three times u, which is x minus three quantity squared dy dx. Another way to write that is h prime of x. which was what we had gotten the other couple of ways that we had done it. Okay, so we're gonna look at some more examples using the chain rule. So now we're given a function y is equal to five times cosine to the negative fourth power of x. So just kind of re reminder that when you have cosine negative four power of X, this is the same thing as cosine of X and that all raised to the negative four power. This is not the same thing as cosine X to the negative four. This piece would be saying that X is just raised to the negative four power and not the cosine. Um, raising that argument to the negative four power is not the same thing as cosine of that whole thing raised to the negative four. So we want to find the derivative. We can break it up into pieces if we want. So let me rewrite this. This is five times parentheses cosine of x just because I think it's easier to look at it this way, to the negative fourth power. And so we need, if we want to, figure out what our inner function is and what our outer function is. So looking at what's inside the parentheses, I'm going to choose my inner function, g of x, to equal cosine of x. Well, we're going to need the derivative of this function, so we might as well take it. So then if that's the case, then the derivative of the inner piece, derivative of cosine, that one was negative sine of x. So if g of x is cosine of x, then my outer function, f of x, well, Let's write down what we have. We have a five out here of my inner. So for that piece, we're gonna put X. And then raised to the negative four power. So that's easy to take the derivative of, I hope. So if that's the case, the derivative of f of x, using our general power rule, bring our power down front, multiply it by the coefficient of five. So negative four times five is negative 20 and subtract one from our exponent. Negative four minus one would give us a negative five. The rule says dy dx is equal to f prime of my inner function, g of x, times the derivative of my outer um, inner function, g prime of x. So we can put that all together. So plugging in, we can do it over here if we want, f prime of g of x. Well, that's the same thing as f prime g of x was cosine of x. So let's go plug in cosine of x. Wherever we see an x, 
in the derivative of f of x. So this would equal negative 20. I see an x there, so replace it with cosine of x, cosine of x. And that x is, um, cosine of x is raised to the negative fifth power. So f prime of g of x, we just found was not this. So let's replace this. And I'm gonna rewrite it, negative 20. Instead of cosine x all raised to negative fifth, I'm just gonna rewrite it like our original problem had. So this is cosine of the negative fifth power of x times the derivative of g of x. So we found that the derivative of g of x, so this is all times negative sine of x. So let's just clean it up a little bit. I have a negative 20 times a negative. So this is gonna actually now become positive 20. Cosine raised to the negative fifth power of x times sine of x. And just so that we don't think that sine of x is part of that argument of cosine, we're just gonna put parentheses there. So I want to look at another example. Y is equal to the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 1, and we want to find the derivative of this. So we've been going through and we've been pulling out pieces and taking um, and doing little steps and then putting it all together. I want to show you how to do this without having to do all those steps like we were doing and, and apply the chain rule all at once. And so let's find the derivative of y. And y is defined as the square root of, underneath the square root is the whole thing, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Well, right now, it's not in the form that we know how to take the derivative of this. So recall, when we had radicals, we rewrote that so that it didn't have a radical anymore, and it was in exponential form. So the square root of x is the same thing we call as x to the one half power. So let's go over here and rewrite y. So y is a, the same thing as parentheses, x squared minus 2x plus 1, all raised to the one half power. So let's go through and take the derivative. So finding dy dx, This is the derivative of the outer function. So notice this outer function, I just put it in a different color. If we took the derivative of the outer function, we bring down our power, one half of the inner piece. So I'm just gonna leave the inner piece the same, x squared minus two x plus one. And then we subtracted one, right? From our exponent, so one half, and I wrote that one when it was a fraction to have a common denominator. So I'd write it as one half minus two halves times, I'm just gonna put a dot for times, the derivative of the inside. So a lot of times, I'm not gonna take the derivative of the inside right away, just because this is something that we tend to forget about. And so if we write it out a couple of times that we're gonna to have to go back and take the derivative of the inside, maybe you won't forget about it, especially when these get kind of tedious and complicated, a lot of rules going on. So we're almost there. dy dx is equal to um, one half. I could, if I wanted to, put that two in the denominator. Let's just leave it up there. Um, let's just keep this as one half for now. Um, of x squared minus two x plus one. This is now raised to the one half minus one is negative one half. 
times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside, well, the derivative of x squared is 2x minus, and the derivative of 2x is 2, and that derivative of the constant is 0. And notice I can clean this up a little bit. I can bring down that negative exponent to the denominator. I also notice that right here, this 2x minus 2 have a factor of 2 in common. I can pull out the 2 and we write it as x 2 times the quantity x minus 1. So here we have um, pulling out the 2. I'm going to write it as 2 times the quantity x minus 1 all over this 2 from the denominator from the 1 half. Um, and then bringing down this piece, this is x squared minus 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. So now, because I factored out the two and this is multiplication, we can cancel our twos. And then let's just rewrite that one half power back as a square root. And so we found that the derivative dy dx is equal to x minus one in the numerator all over the square root of x squared minus two x plus one. Okay, so here's an example where we're going to have to use multiple rules, and I noticed we're going to have to use the chain rule a couple times. Or given that y is equal to theta cubed times e raised to the negative 2 theta, and then that e to the negative 2 theta is multiplied by cosine of 5 theta. And so I have product te technically of three separate functions. And so I need to combine two of those functions together. So maybe let's do the first two times the other function. So I'm going to have to use the product rule here. But within that product rule, that first piece that I'm taking the derivative of, I'm also going to have to use the product rule here. And if we look at e to the negative 2 theta, this is the chain rule. And when we look at the second piece, this five, cosine 5 theta is also the chain rule. So we got a lot of different rules going on at the same time. And so this is where I was saying, going through and writing out what we're going to do and not actually take the derivative right away is helpful. So dy d theta. Well, let's use the product rule, this outer product rule, says the derivative of the first. So the derivative of the first, d d theta of the first, which we decided was theta cubed e of negative two theta times the second, which is cosine of five theta plus the first, which was, we said theta cubed e to the negative two theta times the derivative of the second. Okay, so the derivative of the second would be d d theta of cosine of five theta. Okay, so now let's go through and look at this a little bit. So this here, again, e cubed times e to the negative two theta, we're gonna have to use the product rule. So without actually doing it, let's write that out. So the product rule for this piece says I'm gonna to have to take the derivative of the first. So d, d theta of the first, theta cubed times the second, e to the negative two theta plus the first, which in that case was 
theta cubed times the derivative of the second. And the second in this case, d d theta e to the negative two theta. It was all of that. That's just the product rule of that first piece up there was times cosine of five theta plus theta cubed e to the negative two theta. And now I need to take the derivative of cosine. I can do that right now. Well, let's take the derivative of cosine. So remember, derivative of cosine, that was a negative one. We talked about the derivative of the trig functions. If it has that co in front of the word, that's the way that we remember that the derivative is a negative. Um, that was a little trick I gave you yesterday. So this would be negative sine. So the derivative of the outer cosine is negative sine of the inner of five theta. But in that piece, I have to take the derivative of the inner also. So I'm gonna have to take the derivative d d theta of the inner piece five theta. Okay, so going back to this first bracket, and let's do the pieces. Now take the derivative of theta cubed. Well, the derivative of theta cubed, we can use our general power rule. That is just three theta squared times this second piece, which was e to the negative two theta plus theta cubed. So the derivative of e to the negative two theta. And maybe I need to do this at the side just to kind of talk about it. And maybe I should have done that the same thing with the cosine of five theta. But let's just go back over here and just talk about for a second, y equals e to the negative two theta. If we think of this as a composition of functions, the exponent is gonna be the inner function. So u we can call is negative two theta. So if I want to call y sub u would equal e to the u power. Remember the derivative of u was just itself. So the derivative dy du is equal to itself e to the u. But we also had to times the derivative of the inner piece. So if I look at the inner derivative of the inner piece, the derivative du d theta in this case, that's just equal to negative two. Let's go back in and replace u with the negative two theta. So this is equal to e to the negative two theta times negative two. I'm just gonna pull the negative two out front. So negative two e to the negative two theta. So let's go back in. We took that derivative in here and go and plug that in. So that's a negative two times e to the negative two theta. all times this cosine of five theta plus theta cubed e to the negative two theta, all times that negative sine to the five theta. All times now the derivative of five theta with respect to theta, um, that's just five. I'm gonna put it out here. Pretty darn messy. Um, let me see if I can clean it up a little bit. I could technically distribute. I could bring this five out front here. I can bring the negative out front here. I could distribute this cosine of five theta if I wanted to. I'm not sure if that's gonna make anything nicer. 
I also noticed that e to the negative two theta is in all of those pieces. So I could probably factor that out also. So just maybe rewriting it a little bit. I'm running out of time. So maybe leaving it like this. <laughs> Let's just leave it as then three theta squared e to the negative two theta. This is, let's rewrite the negative two out front. So minus two theta cubed e to the negative two theta. That is all times cosine of five theta. Let's bring the five out front here. So this would be in the minus. So this would be minus five theta cubed e to the negative two theta, sine of five theta. Okay, so here's a case where we use lots of different rules to help us take the derivative. I was thinking again that I would expand this cosine of theta and maybe pull out, in that case, everything would have this e to the negative two theta in here, and we could factor that out in front. And they also have a theta squared in common, so we could also factor that out. Right, here's a theta squared, here's a theta cubed, and here's a theta cubed. So we could start factoring things out because again, later on, we're gonna be trying to find out when the derivative is equal to zero. And in this case, we couldn't do that. And how we would do that would be starting to factor. But we're out of time, so I'm gonna stop there. And this was 3.6 in the homework.